we said these were, this was two different ways to write the same line. We had the parametric equations x equals 8t minus 3, y equals negative 6t minus 2, and then we found what the equation of the line was. We did the math, right? And we got y was, was it negative 4 thirds or 3 fourths? Looks like 4 thirds. Is that right? 4 thirds? 3 fourths. 3 fourths. Negative 3 fourths. Plus, minus 17 fourths? So we took the parametric equations and we, we eliminated t to get the equation of x and y. And then we and then we said, now what if we what if it was going the other way? What if we were given this equation of x and y and we wanted to come up with parametric equations? There's no intuitive, you know, direct route to coming up with this form, right? There's like there's eight and three and six and two, and there's none of those numbers here, right? Except the three. Okay, so instead for this example, we could let x be t, and then y would simply be negative 3 fourths t minus 17 fourths, because x is t. And so what did we say? We said that these are these functions give us the same set of points, but they're not the same function, because for a given value of t, you get a different point for each one. Okay, so let's let's look a little bit more closely at the difference between these two functions. There we go. Sorry, the printer printed two sided. That's very confusing. So what if we looked at, so let's come along and look at this first blue one here. And we know that x is 8t minus 3. What would dx dt be equal to? She says 8. She says 8? 8? Eight? People are nodding. Is it eight? Yes, it's eight. And what does that number mean? So now we're more than a semester and a half into calculus. Okay. So it's a rate of change. And what does that mean? No. I mean, yes, it is, but that's very superficial. What does rate of change mean? What does rate of change mean? dx dt equals 8. Explain to me the meaning of that number. What is that number telling us? Yeah? He said for every change in t, the change in x is 8 times greater than the change in t. Agree with that? That's what that number means. It means for any change in t that you have, your change in x will change by 8. So now let's think about that. What does t mean and what is what is 8? What is x in this context? So we're going to change. So let's do let's do dx dt for this other one. For this equation, x is t. And what's dx dt in this case? So we'll say uh, T1, and then T2, because these are different T's, right? And you said 1, and that's the rate of change. So what does that number mean? Someone who didn't speak up before. So a rate of change of 1 means what? Guadalupe, can you tell me? He said for any change in T, the change in X will be equal to the change in T. Yeah, so x will change the same amount that t changes, always. So now, this is another way to look at how these two functions are different functions, right? We said they're the same, that they give us the same set of points. But how can we think about 
what is this telling about telling us about how the functions are different? dx dt1 is 8, dx dt2 is 1. What is that, how is that telling us how these functions are different? What does a change in t signify in these in these equations when you have a change in t? What does that kind of mean? What's that about? What about a change in x? What's that about? What is a change in x about? Okay. It's a change of coordinate. So, we have to define so if we're just talking about the graph, so so we're just in the context of the graph. Will is that a hand? Uh, yeah. So when the first one t is like a uh, like a third independent variable. Okay. And then the second one it, it rearranges so that t is x. But it's still its own independent variable. It just happens to be that x has the same value as t. But it's still it's still an un, an independent variable the way that it is in the first one. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any other ideas? Isn't that a change in input? What's that? Change in input. Yeah, right. So t is like our independent variable, right? So behind the scenes, t changes. And as t changes, what happens? So as you're thinking about the graph, as t changes, what happens in the graph? Or to the graph? Or What's that? Both x and y will change. So if we think about like kind of like the graph emerging, right? Like the graph wasn't there before, and now we're going to let t change, then what well, we get we get points right we get like some new points are swept out or plotted out right so as so if, if the graph wasn't there before now we let t start changing and plotting points x and y points then what would dx dt equals 8 mean and dx dt equals 1 mean if we're thinking about that the graph emerging as t changes First one, x is going to change by eight times more than t. So, like if we're messing with t, x is going to change in a far greater way. Okay. So, and then for the second one, it's just going to be however much we change t is however much we change x. Did you hear what he said? That was pretty good. So, yeah, so as t changes a little bit, we're going to get what? A change in x of eight for the first version of this line. And it, but in the second version, as t changes a little bit, we're just going to get, you know, just x will change by 1, or the same amount that t changed. So how will these, how will the blue graph versus the red graph be uh, swept out or emerge as t changes? Hey, Haley. What do you mean it's going to affect it so, more? What do you mean by that? Okay. The blue one will emerge quicker. What do you guys think of what Adrian said? So that was the red one. It's not really going to work. 
Sorry, it doesn't go away. Just do it this way. Here's the current value of t, okay? The down here at the bottom is the current value of t. It's going to start over now. It's starting over. So there's, there's the red version, right? The second one. Here's the blue version. Okay, what's going on? <clears throat> Disagree? Does this does this visual now help or agree with what we said? So what's can you explain what's going on here? Okay. And which one's changing faster? The blue one. And and how do we see that in the, the derivative? Right. The change in x is always eight times any change in t, whereas the red one, the change in x is always, always the same as whatever change in t you have. Find, find dy dt for both of them. And, and reason about dy dt. So dy dt1, dy dt2. All right, what's dy dt1? Okay, what does it mean? Jacob, what does dy dt1 being negative 6 mean? It means for any change in y, it's going to be uh, negative 6 times that. So for, every, for any change in what? In t, Okay, so for change in t, yeah. Then the y is going to change. How do we see that in this this animation? So how do we see that this number negative six in this animation, Joseph? That the y value is going down a lot. Well, I'm comparing it to the blue one, but as t is increasing, you see y going down slowly compared to the blue one. So I'm, I'm talking about the dy, the blue one. I'm talking about dy dt equals negative six. Right. So as as t is increasing, right, the red dot is dropping down at negative six times its rate. Right. It's its value. You say the red dot? Were we talking about the? I'm talking about dy dt is negative six. That's the blue one, right? Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. So as you can even more pronounced that way, it makes even more sense that it's, as t is increasing, we'll see here in a second, it starts to rapidly drop once um, it comes onto the screen because as <clears throat> t is increasing, it's dropping at negative six times its rate. Right, negative six times as much as any right. change in t, good. And then what was dy dt for the red one? <clears throat> Negative three fourths. So it goes. It, the red dot goes down less than or three quarters as much as whatever change in t you have. So that means the blue one is changing y a lot more rapidly, right? So over six times as fast, it's it's decreasing its y value than the red one is decreasing. So if t is all real numbers, both both uh, versions give you all the points on the line. 
It's just that they do it very differently, right? They do it very differently. So there are different functions that give the same locus of points. And so, we, so here, this is now using derivatives to kind of talk, talk about that. All right, and then the negative, the negative um, derivatives for the negative values of the derivatives for y mean? Yeah, it will. Question. Um, before you ask that question. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, the visuals kind of confuse me a little bit now because I'm thinking about it and, and at the very beginning, uh, based on a, very, a specific t input, mm -hmm. is it given, it's essentially given us uh, different outputs. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, like if you put one in, remember we did at the end of class last time, we put one in, yeah. you get 5, comma, negative 8. Yeah. You put one in here, you get 1, comma, negative 5. Okay. So yeah, but not only one. not only does it emerge differently, but different the same value of t gives you a different point on each one. Okay. Yeah. If, if it didn't, if, if the same the same value of t gave you the same ordered pair every time, it would be the exact same function, and it, it would just be the same dot moving together. Yeah. Okay, other questions on this? Okay, so let's go back. So let's talk about... Question? Was, it's okay if you do. No, I was just saying, like, I was trying to think of other examples of what T might be. T might be, because I said, I just think, like, oh, well, time. Could. Time is very common for these. But, for instance, like we saw in the circle problem, angle measure, right? So, like... Oh. Cosine t, sine t. Now t is angle measure, so it's it's so your point is a function of what angle you've swept. Those would be like the two most common, but it still it still could be other things too, like uh, like here. How about this? So the the humidity on a mountain, right? So the humidity on a mountain and the the uh, the temperature, the, the temperature and humidity, um, as a function of elevation, right? So if you're on a mountain, like elevation would be your T, and then your humidity and your temperature could be your like your X and Y based on what elevation you're at. Is that, is that something like that? Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. eight. Right. Uh, by over dt is negative six. So the, um, can we compare the speed of uh, the change of x and the change of y? Okay, and then, all right, so good, all right, this is good. So d, you're saying dy dt is negative six. And when you say you want to compare them, what do you want to, how do you want to compare them? Positive eight. Um, yeah. Positive. Yeah. So are you saying for so, a change of t of one, y will go down by six, and inc and x will increase by eight. Yeah. So the speed of the change of x and is much uh, uh, faster than, than the change. I wouldn't say much faster. It's what it's a. Uh, 33% faster, right? Because it'd be like, it'd be, it'd be like two at two more than six would be eight. So it's thir it's 33% faster increase to the right in x than it is down in y. But this kind of leads us to something else. So what about what is dy dx? And what does that mean? What is dy dx? Andre. Mm -hmm. It's negative 
Okay. And did we see that? When we look at those values? So what so so a little change in t, if a little change in t is the same, y changes by negative six as x changes by eight. Right? So then how much does y change with respect to x? How would you do it? You flip you multiply dy over dt by dt over dx. No, do division. Don't don't flip anything. Okay, so then just divide by eight. Yeah. So we see that dy dx is equal to from these? Six, All right, dy dt over dx dt. Yeah, so it's, it's the same change in t. So this change in t would be the same as this change in t. So we can get dy. So we could get dy dx, which is how much what y changes for a change in x, straight from this without finding that right. So if we had if we found dx dt and dy dt and we took dy dt divided by dx dt, we could find this dy dx without ever finding the equation of the equation of y of y and x. You see that? So we could get that. We could get dy dx simply by dividing dy dt by dx dt. And that works for this too, right? So dy dt for the second one, negative 3 fourths divided by dx dt1 is still our negative 3 fourths. So y and x are, for both of these two equations, y always changes the same amount with respect to x, negative 3 fourths as much as x. But how they change with respect to t is very different for these two, two equations. Okay, but this, this is important. You can get dy dx without ever having this right here. You can get it by dy dt divided by dx dt. Now, that could be a function of t. So in this case, it's just a constant because it's a line, right? dy dx is constant. So this dy dx in these parametric equations could be a function of t. And that's when you have a curve, right? If you have a curve around it like this, or it will be a function of t, if it's a curve, right? Because if, if you're curved, then a different values of t will give you different dy dx's, right? Different change in y with respect to x. We'll see more of that. OK. This one. So let's go to OK, we're back. So let's look at this set of equations here. x equals 2 sine 6 pi t, and y equals cosine 6 pi t. Now I want to write that as an equation of x and y. Find an equation So what do we do before to do that? Solve for t and plug into the other one, right? What's going to happen when we solve for t in this case? inverse sine or inverse cosine, right? And so then we're going to have the sine of the inverse cosine or the cosine of the inverse sine. No good, right? This is no good. We don't want this. Okay? So we want something else. We want something else that's going to help us in a much more convenient way um, eliminate t and get an expression of x and y. Any ideas? But that doesn't, dy over dx won't, that will be as a function of t, 
That won't help us get a relationship of x and y. We need a relationship of x and y. So what else do we have? We've got sine and cosine. Something that we have that could eliminate t. Haley, you have an idea? Anybody? Okay, so do you remember this? Sine squared theta plus equals? That's the Pythagorean identity, right? So notice 1 doesn't have any thetas in it. Right? 1 doesn't have any thetas in it. So this is how we can do this. If we can get sine of some argument and cosine of the same argument, which we have, we have the same 6 pi t going into sine as cosine. That's a requirement. Those have to be the same. So then what would sine squared of 6 pi t equal according to our first equation? What is sine squared? So we could say, so, so we could say sine squared of 6 pi t plus cosine squared of 6 pi t. And what does that equal? 1, because 6 pi t is the same angle measure. So what is sine squared of 6 pi t according to our first equation? What would sine squared of 6 pi t be? No. According to the first equation, what is sine squared of 6 pi t? x squared over 4, right? x over 2 squared. Do you see it? Sine of 6 pi t equals x over 2. So sine squared of 6 pi t equals x over 2 squared. Did you see what just happened? Solving for 6 sine pi t so I can put it here. Squared. What is sine of 6 pi t? It's x over 2. So I can put x over 2 squared in for sine squared 6 pi t. Okay, got a nod. Good. All right, so th therefore, what is cosine squared of 6 pi t? Y squared. And that equals? Lo and behold, what do you see that's missing? No t. We got it. Now we just have to recognize what that is. So this is back to pre-calculus. This is x squared over 4. x squared over 4 plus y squared equals 1. Right, so x squared plus y squared equals 1 is a circle, so if you mess with one or the other by a factor, in this case we're dividing by 4, that's going to be an ellipse, it's an elongated circle, right? Or a somehow stretched circle, yeah? How did you go from 2 sine n pi t to 2 sine 6 pi t? Let's forget this. This is the equations we're looking at. So we're, this is what we're working on. 2 sine 6 pi t and cosine 6 pi t. Is that okay? So that, that's the example we're starting with. Okay, so what is this thing? So our general, so this is an ellipse, and our general, let's just... Uh, do our general form so we know what everything means. x minus h squared over plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. And when a equals b, what do we have? Circle, right? If a equals b... It's the circle and it's the radius, right? Because then you can multiply. So if A and B are the same thing, say it's, so they're both A squared, then what? The, then the, these two summed up equal A squared. And what is A? Radius, right? Because you have this squared plus this squared equals radius squared. So if A and B are equal, it's a circle and that's your radius. Because you could just move that up and make it R squared on the right side. See that? So what are all these things? What's H and K? So the point on the ellipse? 
That's the center. It's not a point on the ellipse. It's the center. Again, think of that as a circle, right? If this, if this, if the, if the if these numerators equals r squared, your h and k would be your center. Same with an ellipse. And a and b are called. They're called the directrix. And that's your distance. That's kind of this is like the radius in the x direction and like the radius in the y direction. A is the radius out to, in the x direction. B is the radius in the y direction. So what is our radius in the x direction here? Two. So that brings us out to two zero and zero negative two. And what's our radius, quote unquote, radius in the y direction? One. So there is our ellipse. Yes, sir? How did you get x squared over here plus y squared over this one? What happens to your brain, Andre? You're like in and out of class on me. You're always asking questions about things I explain. OK, so sine, this is sine squared of 6 pi t, right? Yeah. If x is 2 sine 6 pi t, what does sine of 6 pi t equal? It's x over 2, right? It's x over 2. So then what's sine squared? x over 2 squared, right? x over 2 squared. And then what is cosine? Cosine is just y, so cosine squared is y squared. Okay. Yeah, we took, we took time to do that, so make sure you're paying attention. <clears throat> Okay, so here it is. So this set of equations, this parametric set of equations, gives us all those points on the ellipse, and so does the so does the old school way of writing ellipse: x squared over four plus y squared equals one. So then this has direction, right? The this doesn't have direction. This is just a set of points, but this form of it, the parametric, has direction. So how can we find the direction? We can say when t is zero, what point do we get? When t is 0, x is 2 times sine of 0, and y is cosine of 0. What point is that? So x is 2 cosine of 0, and y is, sorry, 2 sine of 0, y is cosine of 0. So when t equals 0, we get what point? We get 1. 0, 1, right? 0, 1. That's this one up here. So this point right here is for t equals 0. Now, if we if we make t equals 1, then what happens is we go around this thing three times because now we're going to input 6 pi into this as opposed to 0. Once around is 2 pi. So 1 is way too big of a number to figure out what direction we're going. So we need something like really small, like uh, one twelfth. So if we took t was one twelfth, it's a little bit bigger than zero. We'd have two sine of what? Pi over two, and cosine of pi over two. You see that? So what point do we get then? Two sine of pi over two, and cosine of pi over two. This is root two zero, right? So this point right here is for t equals. 1 twelfth. Do you see what happened? By putting in 1 twelfth, I get sine of pi over 2 and cosine of pi over 2. So 2 times 0. Is that right? No. So 1. 2 times 1 and 0. So that's the point 2, 0. So what's the, now we know the direction of the curve, right? The direction of the curve is clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. At t equals zero, we're here, and then it, it's, it's going to sweep it out. This set of parametric equations is going to sweep out the curve clockwise. Now, there, here's a different way to, to figure that out. If you say you don't know what t's to choose to get this to to make that conclusion, 
Look at dx dt. What's dx dt? Find dx dt. dx dt equals two what? Cosine six pi t times six pi. Here's what I was talking about. So now here dx dt is a function of t. Now I want to evaluate that at t equals zero. If I evaluate that at t equals zero, what do I get? Twelve pi. So when t equals zero, dx dt is twelve pi. What does it mean? And how does it tell us the direction of the curve? Ariane, do you see? What does dx dt equals 12 pi mean? It's, it's how x is, so it's the rate at t equals 0. Okay, and what does that mean, the rate? Uh -huh. so the x changes 12 pi times that change in t. Right. So around t equals 0, let t change a little bit, x is going to change 12 pi as much. How does that tell you the direction of the curve? Yeah, what is it? It's positive 12t. So x has to go to the So x is, for change in t, x is heading right. And you see that that also tells us that this is a clockwise direction. In fact, it's kind of easier, right? And so what would we expect for dy dt at t equals 0? What do we expect for dy dt at But at t equals 0. But how is y changing when t equals 0, meaning at this point? Yeah, because look, so dy dt, so first change in t, it's going up, and then for just a, barely a split second, how does y change? It pauses, right? It pauses at the high point, and then it starts going down. So it's on its way up, and then it's on its way down. But at t equals 0, like for that split moment, it's pausing. And that should come out in the math, because we get what? Negative 6 pi sine 6 pi t. Plug in t, you get? Zero. So this is like in Calc 1, this is like maximum, right? So a maximum happens when dy dx is zero. So it's all about a change in y. For a split moment, y doesn't change. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. It stays steady, whether you change x or if you change t. And that's telling us that we have a high point where y doesn't y pauses for a moment. So if, if you checked dy dt, that would be, like in terms of direction of the curve, it would be inconclusive, right? It would be inconclusive, because either way it's going to pause. y is going to pause. But dx dt tells us definitively, oof, it's going this way. It's going in the positive direction. Okay, another example. see 16x squared plus y squared over 9 equals 1 Write that curve parametrically. 
Here's the key. Sine squared. So this is the other way now. I'm giving you the equation of x and y, and I'm saying write that as x is a function of t and y is a function of t. So x equals something with t's, y equals something with t's. And here's the key. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So now how do I get, how do I bring t's into the picture here? What do I do? So I've got, I change this to 4x quantity squared plus y over 3 quantity squared equals 1. Why? Because I'm thinking about the Pythagorean identity, right? So what can I do? Sub t in for theta and make 4x squared equals sine squared t. Okay, so then what is 4x equal? 4x equals um, sine t. And what's y over 3 equal? Do you see how that will make this, that will maintain the, this equality, right? Because then sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So then what is x equal? Sine t over 1 fourth sine t. And what is y equal? Is there another way to do it? So this certainly works. Is there another way to do it? Idea? What's the relationship? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So? No. Um, it's just that 4x squared plus y over 3 squared equal to sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Well, that's kind of what we did. So, is there another way we can do this step that still makes it work? That's what I'm saying. We did 4x equals sine t, y over 3 equals cosine t. That made this thing true. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Is there another way we can set these up so you still get the same thing? Does it matter which one comes first? Okay, so what else could we do? Four x 
equals cosine t. Does it work? So if we did 4x equals cosine t and y over 3 equals sine t, then it would be cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Is it true? Yeah, it's the same thing. So now x is what? 1 fourth cosine t. And y is? Version 2. Same functions or different functions? So this is a parametric function, this is a parametric function, same function or different functions? Different, different but points. same points. You get the same, you're going to get the same points that you get from this, what is this thing? Ellipse, right? Ellipse. The y radius is 3, what's the x radius? x squared over 1 16th. What's the x radius? One fourth, right? One fourth. It's the square root of this. So, so, so the, in the x direction, we're going to go out one fourth. In the y direction, we're going to go out three. Both of these give those same points as that ellipse, but in different ways. Is there another way to do it? So notice what? Squared. What does squaring something do? So can we, Haley, can you give me another version then? Sorry. Let's not jump the gun here. So 4x equals what? And, and y over 3 equals? Does it have to be negative? Do they both have to be negative? No, you're going to square them. This could be negative or positive. So I could put positive cosine t here, or negative cosine t. So what happens? We get a ton of variations. We get, so we get these two, and then we get all the possible permutations of one negative, one positive, sine here, cosine here, both of them negative, both of them negative switched. I think there's probably like 8 or 12 different ways to do it. Okay. And they're all going to give us the same set of points, but they're going to do it differently. They're going to start at a different point at t equals 0 and give us a different direction, which we can find out by looking at dx dt and dy dt. So let's just uh, grab that really quick. So what did we say? We said uh, In the x, so just looking at the original equation, we said, do you see that the x radius is like one-fourth? Like here and here. And then the y radius is three. So I'm gonna zoom out on the zoom in on the x-axis. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. All right. So what did I say? Sixteen x squared Okay. So there it is. And then our first version was x equals one fourth cos sine t. Three cosine t. Second version. Third version? And then let's do one more where it's uh, negative one fourth cosine t and negative sine negative three sine t. But there's more, right? There's any combination of switching cosine and sine and switching the signs. They'll all generate these points. They're just gonna start at a different point for t equals zero and have a different direct some will be clockwise, some will be counterclockwise. And you can find that by plugging in values of t, and then also you can find the direction by looking at derivatives. If dy dt is positive, whatever point you're at, y is heading up. If dy dt is negative, whatever point you're at, it's heading down.
Similar x dx dt positive to the right, dx dt negative to the left. Okay. In this case, for the first example. The first, the very first one up here. I think we start here for this one. Dx dt is cosine, so I think this is so it's similar to the first example, where it's going to start at the top and go clockwise. Dx dt is going to be 1 fourth cosine t, which at 0 is positive. So it's going to be heading right. And, it's, and that's what we had on the first one. We had x was sine and y was cosine, so we gave it. So it's going to start at the top and go clockwise.